Welcome to Yarnspirations.com. My name is Brittany and I teach over at Be Hooked Crochet and I'm honored to be able to teach you how to crochet one of my personal designs for Yarnspirations, the Pop Geometric Baby Blanket. This is a free pattern that's available on Yarnspirations.com and I recommend that you go over to their website, you download and print your free copy of the pattern before we get started and once you have that done, then we're going to dive into how to crochet the Pop Geometric Baby Blanket. We're going to begin our first square by creating a slip knot. And then we'll chain six. We want to locate our fourth chain from the hook. So we have one, two, three, and four. That's where we're gonna work our first double crochet stitch. Now I personally prefer to work in the back bump of the chain. So when I flip it over, you can see just that little bump there. I think it creates a neater edging. It also makes it a little bit easier to sew these together later on. But if you're finding it difficult to work in that back loop, then feel free to just work in the side loop here. So you'll make a double crochet into that fourth chain from the hook. And now you have two remaining chains. We're going to go ahead and double crochet in each of those as well. What we've done up until this point is we've worked on that first corner little block. If you look at the corner to corner pattern very closely, it's just a bunch of little blocks that, are, that work upon each other, that build upon each other in order to create the pattern. So from here, we'll go ahead and turn our work. We'll chain six. And we'll find that fourth chain from the hook again. And we'll work a double crochet there. And just like before, we should have two remaining chains. We'll go ahead and double crochet into each of those two. Now we need to anchor it to this other block, the first one that we made. So we're gonna locate our chain three and just stick your hook underneath that chain. Then yarn over and pull through and through to slip stitch. So now that is completely secured and we're ready to move on to the next little block. We'll chain three and then we're going to make three double crochets around this chain. So you don't have to work into the chains when you're on this section here. That's only at the very beginning of each row. Now when you hold it this way, this is the corner of our block. Or if we were to, to lay it down just like this, this would be the bottom corner of our block. So that's pretty much it for the pattern repeat for the block. We're gonna demonstrate a few more rows just so you can get the hang of it. We'll turn our work and we'll chain six. So this chain six comes at the very beginning of every row. And when we have the chain six, we're always going to find that fourth chain and double crochet there.
and then we'll double crochet in the remaining two chains. Now since I'm working in the back bump, that's why I'm turning it quite a bit there. But as you can see, since I'm doing that, the part that's exposed is a nice little braided edge. And so if you're working on maybe another pattern where the edge is exposed, then this is a nice clean edge. And it also makes it easier if you have to do a border, you can work into these stitches like that. And in our case for this pattern, it makes it easier to stitch the blocks together. So once you've completed that, you have to secure it. And you'll do that by finding our next little block and slip stitching underneath that chain three. Now from here to start the next block, you'll chain three and you'll double crochet three times around this space. Once again, we have to secure this, so we'll just look over to the next block and join with a slip stitch under that chain. And we can't finish here. We have to keep going with another block. So what we're doing at this phase is we are increasing. So we're starting from the bottom corner and we're working our way out on this side and on this side. And as you can see, we have our, we have three blocks here but we only have two blocks here. So we need to make another one so that that way we continue in a square. You'll chain three to do that and double crochet three times around that chain space. Now that will complete our third row. And we're counting our rows diagonally, of course, for this. So this was row one, row two, row three. All right, now we'll just turn our work. We'll chain six. Locate your fourth chain and double crochet there. and double crochet in the remaining two chains. Now you'll secure it to the next block and just continue with our repeat. So chain three, three double crochet around that chain space. Secure it to the next block. Chain three. and three double crochet. Secure it to our last block in this row. Chain three and three double crochet in the chain space. Now what we've done is we have crocheted almost half of our block already. This pattern comes together really quickly. We're just going to count the blocks here in order to keep track of where we are. So we have four. This is going to be the smaller of the two blocks. So we want to have a total of 10 blocks from one side to the other. 
And the way we have to do this is we increase for half of the square and then we decrease for the other half. What I need for you to do at this point is continue this pattern repeat that we've covered until you have 10 blocks here on the bottom. When you can count 10 blocks on the bottom, then we'll come back to the video and I'll demonstrate how to decrease. So what I've done off camera here is I have crocheted half of my square. So you can see if you count the blocks, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, that's where we want to pick up on this next section. So we've done all of our increases. This is as big as we want the square to be. And now we're going to decrease. And the way we're going to do that is just a little bit different than the way we worked our increases, of course. The only difference is going to be on the first block and down here at the very last block. What we had been doing up until this point is at the start, we chained six and then we worked our three double crochet within those chains. Well, that we only do when we want to increase. So what we need to do at this point is work some slip stitches. We want to make our first block right here. So we're going to slip stitch in that first stitch right next to our hook, slip stitch in the next one, and then slip stitch in, the, in that chain space. We can shift our work over, and now this is the familiar pattern. We'll chain three, and we'll work our three double crochet around that chain here. And since we've taken care of just that first little section, everything from here until the very end of this row is exactly the same. We'll secure this block to the next one with a slip stitch, chain three, three double crochet, and just repeat that until you get to your second to last block. So over here, you'll stop when you get here. Now when you've made it to this last little section here, we're going to join with a slip stitch in that chain space, just like before. And here's where we differ on the decrease now. Before we were chaining three and adding one more little block section here. But since we no longer want to increase, we're not gonna do that. We're just going to end here. So we will turn our work over and then we're going to slip stitch just straight over until we get to this little section here because now that's where we want to begin our next row. So we'll just slip stitch one, two, three, and that fourth time in the chain space. And we'll pick up with our repeat right here. So chain three and three double crochet. And that is our repeat for the decreasing section of the pattern. What you'll need to do in order to create all of your blocks is work the same pattern just as we have been until you have a total of eight small blocks. So eight where we have 10 blocks wide. And then you're going to crochet two where we have 20 blocks wide. Now that larger block is crocheted the same way as this one is. The only difference is where you're going to start the decreasing. So what we did at this point was we crocheted until we we could count 10, right? So for the other one, you're gonna you're just gonna crochet, continue increasing until you can count 20. And then you'll start the decrease just like we did here. Well, before we get too ahead of ourselves, we're gonna go ahead and finish up this block first. So continue crocheting your decrease all the way until you have just one block remaining. And then I'll, I'll show you how to fasten off and finish up your squares. So I've reached this last little section. I continue decreasing all the way down until I have just this one block remaining. So we'll treat it the same. We'll chain three. We'll make three double crochets around that chain space.
You can see the color bleeds on this yarn. It's really cool. Okay, then we're going to join with a slip stitch to that chain three. And if you look at it now, our square is complete and we can go ahead and fasten off. Just pull that tail through the loop on your hook. And now let's have a look at how to weave in our ends. Now it's always a good idea to do this dreaded task as you go along when you're creating a bunch of squares, saving it for the last part is generally no fun. So you'll just thread that onto your darning needle. And what I like to do is work my ends through like a dense portion of stitches. So right at the base of your stitch. And this is actually my starting corner. So I'm just gonna work it under there. And I'm just gonna follow the trend. So you can see that this is the base of the stitches right here. So I'm gonna work in that direction. Now if I follow it up this way, I can see that other row of stitches and work under there. And once you just have a little bit remaining, it's always a good idea to try to go back in the other direction just to secure it up. And then you're safe to trim that off. So you'll just repeat that for the other corner. And now let's talk about the pattern and what you need to do to finish things up. What I recommend doing is crocheting all of your squares first before you join anything. That way you can lay them out into different ways and different orientations and find the best looking since every square is gonna be unique because of the yarn that we're working with. It just will usually work out a little bit better if we can put some more thought into how we're stitching them together. So what do you need to do at this point? Well, this pattern consists of eight of the smaller blocks and two of the larger blocks. So what you need to do before you, I recommend you move forward is to crochet your two big blocks and crochet your eight smaller blocks. Then once you have that, then I would recommend just laying it out on the bed somewhere, trying to figure out exactly how you want all of these squares and these blocks to come together. And then the last section of the video, I'll demonstrate how we're going to stitch these together. Once you have all of your squares crocheted, you've laid them out and you made the difficult decision to figure out how you want to arrange them, then we're going to join them together. And I'm demonstrating here how we join this. So what we do here is we're single crocheting these together. And this gives us a nice little 3D ridge almost in between each one of the squares, kind of pulling in a little bit more of that geometric aspect of this design. So you're going to need just a little bit of yarn. You probably only have a little bit left. And for me, it works out pretty well because the amount that's left is all the same color. That may not be the case for you depending on your lot number and how you finished up your last squares. You know, each of the, the cakes tend to, tend to work out a little bit differently for each one of these designs. So either way, it's gonna look great. If you have a solid color, obviously you'll see this demonstrated here, but when you have the color transitions too, that's even gonna add a little bit more to the design. So if that's the case for you, I wouldn't worry too much. So what you'll need to do first is we'll grab four of the small squares and I'm gonna demonstrate how to crochet them together just like you see here. I recommend that you crochet all of the smaller squares together first. That way you have four big blocks that you can crochet together at the end. So we'll go ahead and do this next. So grab your grab two of your four squares in the way that you want to stitch them together. So these are the next two blocks that I wanna to crochet together. And I want to crochet them together so that they lay just like this. So this is going to be my seam. And I have the right sides facing up. As you know, this is a reversible design. So you determine what is the right side based on how you want the squares to be arranged. So know that you have what you want to be the right sides facing up and your seam here in the middle. And we're just going to grab them and pinch them just like that so that they are laying like this. 
Okay, here I have a little bit of a closer look. So this is our seam edge. This is where I wanna seam it. So I'm just gonna turn it so that I can actually crochet with it. I've made a slip knot with my yarn. And there's a couple things to keep in mind when you're stitching these together. For every single one of these little blocks, that's what I'm gonna call them, just little blocks of three double crochets, on one side, you're going to be working in the stitches themselves while on the other side you're going to be working around the side of a stitch because the way these fit together they're opposite so we don't have like we have stitches here that we would work into and it's going to be exactly the opposite on the other side see how they're facing in this direction so that's just the nature of this design but it makes it pretty easy to work into so all i'm going to do is find the first of those three stitches so i can see it's right here and I'm gonna stick my hook into the stitch. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're working in the stitches themselves, you're always either going to be working in a foundation chain or into a slip stitch. So if you recall back to how this was made, there were sections on the side where we were working our double crochets into a chain. This is why I recommended that you work your stitches in that back bump of the chain. It just makes this a little bit easier. So you'll stick your hook into that chain and then you'll look at the back, you'll find this first little block and you'll just place your hook underneath the stitch. So we're not worried about going into the, the stitch or anything like that. It makes it much easier to just go in, then you'll pull the yarn through and chain one. Now this first chain right here will count as our first single crochet in this little section right here. So now we'll just locate our second double crochet so I can see it right there and just insert my hook into the stitch and then jump to the back and I can see there's my, my double crochet that I'm going to be working around and we'll make a single crochet. Then locate the next double crochet and jumping around. Now you've probably noticed this is actually a chain. So we're just going to work around the chain as if it were a double crochet. So no big deal there. Okay, so that concludes that first little block. Now we alternate. So on this side, my double crochets are facing in this direction. So I'm going to work my single crochet stitches around this double crochet on the edge. So just place your hook directly under it, whoops, <laughs> directly under it, and then locate the back. So the back section, we're looking at this block here. And you can see now these have changed direction, so I'll be working into stitches. And if you look really closely, you can see that I have a slip stitch here. So this is the edge where I was slip stitching. And you can see there's kind of multiple Vs to work into. And that can kind of confuse you a little bit if you're not used to working into slip stitches. What you wanna do is find the V that's closest to the outside of the work. So see how when I turn it this way, I mean, there's, there's really not a V there, but it could be interpreted as one right here. But if I keep going, then I can see the real V. Okay, so I'm just gonna insert my hook underneath that stitch and single crochet. And we'll do that three times. So now on this side, we're just gonna make three single crochets around the stitch. And on the back here is where we're going to work in each individual stitch. And then you're just gonna repeat that until you get to the end of your row here. We'll just locate the next little section, find my first double crochet, insert my hook there. Once again, I have a little chain here. next stitch, double crochet, or find the double crochet and we'll single crochet around that stitch. Now, if you're having trouble at all locating these stitches to work into, I wouldn't be too alarmed. Honestly, the main goal here 
is that you place the same number of stitches in the same location. It works out better if you can do three stitches for each one of these little blocks in the corner to corner design. And that's going to make sure that you don't have any ruffling or, or that sort of thing by having too many stitches there. But like I said, the other goal is making sure that you have them in the same place. That's going to make sure that you have an even looking join. Now, one of the things that's pretty characteristic to the single crochet joining method is you'll notice on it kind of leans. So on one side, you see the nice little braid and on the other side, you kind of see the back side of the stitch. And there's a couple of different ways that you can avoid this or fix this if you really don't like it. One of the things I do, I, I like to do is just block, I'm gonna pull my stitch out there so I don't lose it. I'll just finger block the stitches and just sort of pull them so that the braid is a little bit more on the top rather than kind of leaning to the side. Now this helps out quite a bit. The other thing you can do is actually wet block this. And I do recommend that you wet block your projects because that's really going to help the overall shaping of your blanket. So now that we have joined the first two squares, I'm going to grab the next two squares. So ones that would go right here and I'll show you how to attach those. Okay, so what I have here are my next two blocks that are in order to be sewn together. This is how I want them to look. So I'm just laying them out exactly as I want them to be attached. And we'll do the same thing that we did before. We'll just pick them up and flip them over. So we'll just lay those there. What I would recommend now is just folding up these first two. It's just a little bit easier for you to hold on to things. This is my seam edge. So that's what I'm going to be working on. And I'm just going to pick up my working loop and really we're not doing anything special or different here. We're going to find the first block. So my stitches are facing this direction here. So I know that I'm gonna be working around the side of this stitch. So I'm just gonna place my hook under there and then I'll find the first stitch on the back. So I know since my stitches are running this way on the front block, they're gonna be running the opposite way on this back block. So I know I'm going to be working in the first three stitches. And this first stitch, you want it to be quite a bit tighter than you normally would because this is the stitch that is joining these four blocks together. So I'm just going to make sure I have quite a bit of tension here on my working yarn. I'm just pulling up real high and make my single crochet stitch. And that's it, everything else is the same. You're just going to continue with your, your same stitch pattern that we demonstrated before. Once you've made it all the way to the other side of your second set of blocks here, then you can go ahead and fasten off And the next order of business is to, of course, stitch up this side now. So what we're going to do is the same as before. This is the right side that's facing up and we're just going to fold them over. And now this is my seam edge. We're not doing anything different here at all. We're just going to fasten on. Of course, we'll have this little piece to work around when we get to it. So make your slip knot, find your first set of blocks here. My stitches are running in this direction, so I'm going to work around the stitch here. And in this situation, my stitches are working along this way here as well on this back one. So I'm gonna work under that stitch too. And it may vary, just depends on how you have your stitches arranged so that Chain one will count as our first stitch. We'll just go ahead and make three single crochets. Well, three total. So that first one counted as one. So we'll really just make two single crochets there. And these are aligning up exactly the same. So I have my stitches running vertically on this side and on the back side. So I will just 
work into each of the stitches. And just proceed until I get to that join. I want to show you just how simple it is to work over that too. Well, now I've come to the part where I have my join to work over, but there's something I wanted to point out. If you look here, I have just two stitches remaining because I worked this join over one of those double crochets. Now that's going to be the case some percent of the time. And it really just depends on, again, how you arrange these. Because as you know, on the edge, sometimes we have a chain three, and then we have the three double crochets, and sometimes we don't. So in this case, it worked out that way. And I want to try and maintain my stitch count. So in order to do that, I'm gonna make my first single crochet just in between here, and then work my next two in the stitch. And again, this is just little things that you might have to do to work around how you want these blocks to be arranged. And again, the main goal is just to Try and be consistent with where you're placing the stitches and be consistent with the number of stitches for each block. Now with that out of the way, we're just going to jump over to the other side. We're not gonna work any extra stitches in or around this join. So I'm just going to notice which direction my stitches are going. So I'm going to work around the stitch here and it's the same on this side as well. So I'm just going to work this first stitch as tight as I possibly can because again, that's what's going to be bridging this little gap between the two sections. Once you get through that, everything else is of course exactly the same. I'm just gonna finish stitching up here to the end of my row. And once you get to the end of your second row here, you can go ahead and fasten off You'll of course want to repeat all of these steps for the other four smaller blocks that you have. Once you finish that, then you'll be left with four big blocks, right? So four blocks that are exactly the same size, which is exactly the same as this scenario here. So what you'll do in that case is after you sew or after you crochet your remaining four blocks together, then you'll go ahead and treat the large blocks just as I demonstrated here with the small blocks. So you're just going to have two more seams. So you'll have one long one vertically and then one long one horizontally, which is actually gonna come on the top of this group of four. Now once you have that completed, of course you'll just weave in your tails here, just pulling them around and weaving them in under the back side of the blanket. You can wet block your project if you want to do that. Uh, if that's a new concept for you, I do have a pretty detailed tutorial on different ways that you can block your project and, and what that means. You can find that at behookedcrochet.com slash block your project if you want some more information on that. That wraps up our tutorial on the Pop Geometric Baby Blanket. I hope you've had a lot of fun making yours. I know I had a lot of fun teaching you how to crochet it, and I want to thank your inspirations, not only for the opportunity to design this wonderful pattern, but also to teach you how to crochet your very own. If you've enjoyed this tutorial and you like my teaching style, you might also find some great information at my website and YouTube channel. That's at BeHookedCrochet.com. I hope to see you there, and I look forward to teaching you in another Your Inspirations tutorial coming up very soon.